Hello everyone and welcome to a very nice game featuring a very interesting opening that I played a few days ago. Uh, I thought about showing it on the channel but never really had um, uh, any uh, spare moments. But now uh, I was kind of waiting to show you the Wesley vs Hikaru game uh, but they decided to go for the famous um, uh, Berlin draw after only a few moves so uh, we're not going to be showing that. And the first game from the FIDE Grand Prix Finals I didn't, uh, I, I didn't consider it to be uh, all that interesting so I decided to to skip it and maybe show the second game but the second game was this um, uh, well uh, draw that we've seen uh, far too many times so I decided okay this would be maybe a nice opportunity to show you uh, this game uh, and maybe get more of you to try using the Evans Gambit in your uh, online adventures so uh, we're going to be checking it out I have the white pieces my opponent is a gentleman named Bar555 uh, he was rated around 2300 when the game was played now, I will put a link of the actual game in the description below so if you want to check it out you are welcome to do so because we are not going to show the entire game the entire game is very long uh, as um, I had a really stupid moment and then I blundered all all of my advantage I still was able to win the game as I uh, employed some dirty flagging techniques and that's why I won uh, but the, uh, the the beginning of the game is quite nice so uh, we are going to focus on that but if you want you can check out the entire game in the description so uh, I had the white pieces uh, and I opened with e4 as I usually do uh, my opponent played e5 knight to f3 knight to c6 and the bishop to c4 I go for the Italian game of course hoping my opponent goes for bishop to c5 which he does and I was very happy here as I get to play the Evans Gambit. So b4 I offer a pawn for some very nice um, uh, expansion. We have bishop captures on b4, he accepts the gambit and now c3. And now uh, we've said many times and I even made a short video on this that uh, the bishop can retreat to many different squares uh, and you should pretty much know all of them. Uh, if you still haven't seen it do check it out it will be the first link in the description below. Uh, but uh, in this game bishop to a5 was played which is uh, a very very nice uh, I strike in the center with the d4, e captures on d4, and now queen to b3. Uh, here, castles is the most popular option, but queen to b3, second most popular, I prefer this one. Uh, as uh, for those uh, who, who are not um, uh, so uh, often, uh, well... Uh, attacked by the Evans Gambit, maybe maybe uh, who will not be able to defend against Queen to B3 all that well. And this is a three minute uh, blitz game, so that's what I was going for. Queen to E7, he has to defend the F7 uh, pawn, and I just castle here. And here, uh, you should always go for bishop to b6. This is black's main defensive idea against this line of the Evans Gambit. Point is, you free up the a5 square for the knight. You want to play knight a5 and eliminate the light square bishop. So that's, uh, as this will be a huge problem for black in many lines. Uh, but my opponent played d6. And okay, this is still perfectly fine uh, if you uh, know what you're doing. But... Uh, uh, it seems that the position is already incredibly, incredibly sharp. I played bishop to a3 here. I prepared this e5 idea as it makes sense that d6 pawn is pinned. So, of course, I want to open up uh, this and a knight to f6 will be met with e5. Uh, but uh, even even more interesting is e5 right away. So the, the idea why this is so strong uh, is that if, uh, for example, d captures on e5 is played, uh, we can simply play c captures on d4. And now after e captures on d4, it seems like you don't really have anything because rook to a1 is impossible. Both queen and um, uh, the bishop are covering the, the e1 square. But there is this knight to d2 move, which makes black's position really, really uncomfortable. Rook to e1 is now coming. Also bishop to e3 on the next move. Uh, depending on what black plays, this will be very, very hard. Hard, um, uh, almost impossible to defend for black and another thing after e5 you don't have to capture of course with the deep one you could capture with the knight here but then we capture with our own knight now black has to recapture this and uh, you have to be careful otherwise bishop to b5 check will also queen to b5 check will also win the bishop on a5 so here queen captures has to be played to guard the bishop but now we pick up the f7 pawn bishop captures king f8 and now c captures on d4 this is just a very very uh, ugly position to be in but uh, still it's playable for black for example queen f5 we're going to attack the bishop bishop moves back and we continue black is still up material uh he lost castling privileges and he will of course go knight to f6 next and uh, try to 
somehow get his pieces into the game. But it is very nice, and seemingly uh, after d6, e5 is the way to go. But okay, I played bishop to a3. Uh, my opponent played bishop to b6. Now he wants to play knight to a5 here, and I played c captures on d4. Sort of trying to get him to maybe consider capturing on d4, because of course now, okay, he can play knight to a5, but then I keep the strong center. Uh, and here he played knight captures on d4. Now knight to a5 is still uh, preferred here, but he, he went for the pawn, which is still okay, and nothing wrong with this. Uh, knight captures on d4, bishop captures, and now I play knight to c3. And in uh, many similar lines of the Evans Gambit, uh, you will have this idea of going uh, to d5 with your knight, and my opponent did not want to allow this, especially now when the queen is on e7, and he stopped this by playing c6, and c6 is a terrible mistake here. If you want to stop this, you have to play knight to f6, then okay, you, you guard the d5 square, next move you're going to castle, and the game continues. However, here after c6, the game is now, uh, well, just winning for white, and you have to find the correct idea. I played rook a to d one, this is the correct idea. Uh, I attack the bishop, and now if the bishop moves, we're of course gonna capture on d6. So you could block this with bishop to c5, sorry, bishop to c5 or bishop to e5, but bishop to e5 looks pretty silly after f4. Uh, black has to go for bishop captures on c3, and now we capture on d6 first to go for a nice in-between move, queen f6, and now even bishop to e5 and black completely falls apart here. Bishop captures, let's say f captures here, and now look at this, uh, black is ju just falling apart here, the rook also controls the d file uh not much for for black to do here uh so instead after rook eight to d1 my opponent didn't go bishop d5 he played bishop to c5 uh, but now, of course, the game is completely winning for white. Uh, so feel free to pause the video and to win the game for me while I give you a couple of seconds. So uh, for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations on spotting this uh, wild idea. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it is, of course, pawn to e5. We have to open up the center at any cost uh, as the queen and king are nicely aligned on the e file. And this is what we're going to use. So my opponent played bishop captures on a3, but I do not recapture. I just play e captures on d6 now attacking his queen. And he played bishop captures on d6 back. So he won a piece now, but I have rook f to e1. And now, how do you defend against this? Well, if you go bishop to e6, we just capture it, uh, and there's really not all that much. Now you're going to move the bishop, and still the rook will be uh, extremely strong here. Uh, even there are some lines, even if you move the king, we can even play rook captures um, uh, on d6, for example, queen captures on d6, and queen captures on b7, now threatening the rook and also threatening checkmate. So uh, black is uh, uh, completely lost here if he plays bishop to e6. So here, bishop to e5 was played, and okay, now you don't have uh, such ideas, but you have something else. Uh, bishop captures on f7. I, I could also play f4, uh, but I thought that this would be stronger. And uh, okay, the engine agrees. So bishop captures on f7 is fine. Uh, king to f8. Uh, if you go for queen captures on f7, then we just play rook captures on e5 with check. So my opponent didn't want to allow this. He played king to f8, but I still played rook captures on e5 with check. And now the point is, uh, if queen captures on e5, we just play rook to d8 with check. And after king to e7, we play rook to e8 check. Pick up the queen and that's it. Uh, you don't even get to uh, win the rook with the king because there's knight to e4 check first. And now there's really nothing better. If king f5, you're going to get checkmated. So you're going to have to give up the queen this way. So instead, after rook captures on e5, my opponent uh, was still very resourceful. He played bishop to g four now attacked my rook on d1 and here uh, what uh, what do you play? I played rook captures on e7. It's a perfectly fine move uh, grabbing the queen because the game is completely winning for white now, but even stronger would have been rook d to e1. It's okay, maybe a bit weird in a in a three-minute blitz game to allow your opponent to move the queen when you could just grab it, uh, but here uh, there's just no move for black, and it's such a beautiful position uh, if you capture the bishop just queen b4 check. Black king has no squares, you have to put something in between, just rook captures on e7, attack the queen. Once the queen moves, you have all sorts of nasty discoveries, so this is um, uh, completely winning. But okay, I played rook captures on e7, uh, he played bishop captures on d1, attacked my queen, and now uh, pretty much any move here in this position is winning. 
Uh, you could just, for example, capture the bishop here, and uh, after uh, he captures the rook, we can just play queen to f3. And there's no move black can make uh, any move. Uh, well, you're going to have to give up the knight, because you have to free up this square for the king. Otherwise, uh, we just move the king and play queen to f7. So you're going to have to play something like knight g6, and then we uh, capture this with check. And now it's completely unplayable. However, I played queen to b4. I actually uh, forgot that the knight covers the e7 square, and now the game takes a bit of a different turn but still after knight captures on e7 which he captured I have to play queen to f4 and it's still completely winning for me because the idea is the same we are going to move the bishop and the, the, the black king has no squares but I played knight captures on d1 he played king captures on f7 and now the game is not so great I played queen captures on b7 and the engine gives this as roughly equal uh, and uh, well, I, I have to I have to agree with the engine because I simply could not find any any useful <laughs> moves here. So in the end, the game lasted for some. This is move twenty two. The game lasted for twenty two more moves, and in the end, I won the game by dirty flagging my opponent, which is not very honorable. But uh, I was very sad that I blundered such a beautiful uh, winning position, and uh, then I I, I didn't want to lose rating as well. Uh, so that's why I did it. But um, uh, yeah, other than that, it was a, it was a, a fine Evans Gambit game, and, uh, it, you know, uh, I, uh, it, it's still possible to blunder. It doesn't matter how good your position is uh, here after, even after I didn't go for this best rook, rook dt1, uh, my opponent uh, played bishop captures on d1, like, uh, literally, any move... Uh, any move is perfectly winning here. I, I could even capture on b7. I, I could do really, I mean, there's, uh, uh, but, but queen b4, uh, <laughs> I completely forgot the, the knight could just capture the rook here. And it's still uh, probably winning for white, but, uh, you know, any other move would have won. Uh, but yeah, uh, basically I'm showing you this game uh, and making this video to show you how it's uh, very much possible to get great positions with the Evans Gambit and that still not a lot of people uh, know how to defend against it because uh, th there are a couple of lines that are really really good for black and if uh, the player with the black pieces knows them then you're going to have a very interesting game uh, you know to, to say the least but if uh, uh, if you don't know for example the ideas of bishop to b6 when they have to be played exactly then you're going to have a very very uh, easy uh, e easy game with white especially in the opening and if you like attacking if you like open games then you're going to uh, enjoy it very much uh, so yeah uh, that's the game hope you guys enjoyed it uh, do use the Evans Gambit, and uh, especially when you get to that critical point, uh, don't blunder the game like I did, uh, but rather, you know, uh, end the game like it, uh, like it should end by you winning the game brilliantly. Uh, but if you don't, then you can also, like me, uh, use some dirty flagging techniques and flag your opponent. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not the best, but... Uh, yeah <laughs> uh so yeah uh that's the game hope you guys uh, enjoyed it uh, i would like to thank uh, hop and sheep uh, edmund freeman uh, christian janot uh and the murmurs gambit for your contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it uh, as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you all for watching and i will see you soon uh, continuing the coverage of the fide grand prix uh, unless they uh continue making these uh quick draws uh, but yeah i ho hope that doesn't happen and if you guys still haven't do check out the evans gambit tutorial video it will be the first link in the description below. So thank you all. I will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day.